Hi, I'm Lisa Gar, host of The Aware Show. Hormones, fatigue, weight gain, aging, these are considered four of the most annoying words and very scary to many simply because we are so unfamiliar with the chemical reactions that happen in our own bodies. Joining me is Donna Gates. She's the founder of the Body Ecology Health and Healing System. It's used by hundreds of thousands around the world and it's been used for the past 25 years. And Donna can explain what to expect when hormones are out of balance and why this causes fatigue, weight gain, accelerated aging, and most important, how to reverse it. Welcome, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, you're I gonna love solve, that we're doing this together. Yes, you're gonna solve a lot of problems for a lot of women and men today we're talking about. So yeah, yeah, we want the men to be included too. They so, have hormones too. Yes, yes they do. So tell me, is it true after age 40 that your body no longer produces enough estrogen, so therefore you have to either supplement with estrogen or live without it? which means weight gain and brain fog and all well, that. Well, the first hormone that really starts to decline much, much earlier in a woman's body is progesterone. And many teenagers today I see are very low in progesterone. And they, can t- you, they, they will know they're low in progesterone if they have PMS and uh, long, longer periods, and they're very moody and emotional, tender breasts. All those things mm. are a sign of low progesterone. So at in- that age, you can just go right to the health food store and get a progesterone cream and rub it in from about the second or the eighth day, you know, there's different um, theories on when to rub it in, but say from the seventh to about the 22nd day of your cycle, Uh uh and then stop and then let your period come and then keep doing that and you'll be able to catch up with the progesterone. And and then, then, because at that age, they're often estrogen dominant because they're, don't they lack progesterone? But then, as a woman gets older, Wait, so that can happen in your teenage years. You can actually help. Very common today because teenagers. I have daughters who are no longer teenagers. But they went through that age, and then a son, you know, kid sons and their girlfriends. So, and I'm real into teenagers and yeah. you know, college age students and all anyway. And I see them struggling, and I call it same thing, you know, college age that age group too. So I, I see they're struggling already with hormone imbalances. So it starts right away. And then you're right, as after women get uh, to the age where they're beginning uh, to have a decline in hormones. Now, that used to be in the 40s, but today that decline is happening in their 30s. Okay. And um, mid 30s, easily, uh, they could begin to um, have a, basically be going into menopause. Mid 30s. Mid 30s. Mm-hmm. Wow. And, and men, got to okay. get the men in here too. Yes. It used to be that men's testosterone levels started declining maybe in their mid-40s in the baby boomer generation. Today in the young generation, their testosterone can begin begin to be too low in their 20s, um, late 20s, or losing their testosterone as they're hitting their 30s. It's a big problem. Okay, so in their mid-30s to 40s, Mm -hmm. is it something that we should really do to supplement our estrogen, or how would we know? No. How would we know that it's now The declining? last thing you want to do is go on hormones or supplement with hormones, but there are things you can do, other types of supplements, and of course, first of all, you know I'm going to say this, is diet. Okay. So you got to get the sugar mm-hmm. and the gluten and the dairy, even the dairy. Mm. Dairy comes from a cow or a female sheep or goat or some animal that's a female, and it's got a lot of estrogen in it. So if you are eating milk, uh, if you're a man, for example, and you don't want extra estrogen in your body, um, if you have too much estrogen in your body and because you're going through menopause and you're overweight, um, dairy's not a good food for you because it's got Cheese estrogen in it. Cheese and everything. Cheese, mm-hmm. the whole, whole spectrum. Mm-hmm. And then also um, uh, just sugar. Sugar has a really negative effect. I'll just an example, one example. Recently, I was reading the research on how the hypothalamus, which is this really important organ in our body, <clears throat> in our brain, mm-hmm. it's a master switch. Uh, it signals all the other uh, organs in the endocrine system, and it regulates energy expenditure. So we want it to be working or we get fat. And it can, um, So when it's not working right, it... Um, uh, we crave sugars, for example, we pack on the pounds. Mm. Now what happens when you eat sugar, uh, the, the hypothalamus has little docking stations or receptor sites for estrogen. And so now the docking stations don't work. The estrogen can't get into the hypothalamus. 
And so it's not working right, and we start craving sugars. Uh -huh. Our energy goes down. We're not burning energy as much, uh -huh. and we do pack on the pounds. So then the metabolism slows down, so that's way why down. the weight gain happens. Way down. Mm -hmm. now, I... And we pack on the pounds in the middle of the body. Now, that's really common during uh, as a woman goes into menopause. That's exactly what's happening with her body. Uh, the estrogen, the receptors for estrogen, even if she's making it, the receptors are dull. So they can't have the estrogen. They can't accept it. And then um, all, all this part of the problem is the is the estrogen's not getting into the cells. And and when you do um, have too much estrogen, it goes in the mid, the front of the woman's body on her belly. If that's too much or too little estrogen, that's both. That's around um, the well. Middle. What's happening is there's too little in the cells, mm -hmm. and then there's estrogen out, not getting in the cells. So okay. So there's estrogen there, but it's not available to the cells. So estrogen is responsible for things like brain function, um, mm -hmm. socialization, mm -hmm. uh, uh, engagement in conversation, mm -hmm. depression, um, skin. I mean, if you don't have it, you can become very depressed. Skin, skin, absolutely. hair, nails, mm -hmm. um, interaction. I mean, it is responsible for so many things. It also mm -hmm. sex drive, <laughs> sex drive, of course, uh, along with testosterone. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and also having, you know, it's going to embarrass the guys to talk about, but when women make love, they need to have enough lubrication, yes. mm -hmm. and the est estrogen is really vital for that. And otherwise, intercourse becomes very painful. Absolutely. So it is a, a very, very important hormone to have mm -hmm. in the body. And mm -hmm. so after a certain age, if those hormones begin to decline, what can you do to either regulate the hormone or stop the decline in the first place? Which, mm -hmm. which one do we want to do? We want to regulate? Well, the first thing you want to do is focus on your thyroid and your adrenals. Okay. You need to make sure they're getting the foods that they need or the nu nutrients they need. Like mm -hmm. the adrenals need B vitamins, lots of vitamin C, okay. and they need minerals. Okay. And the thyroid needs minerals also, a lot of minerals, particularly iodine, zinc, and selenium. Those are essential for the thyroid. And, but the thyroid also needs healthy fats, particularly the fats with vitamin A and D. The thyroid needs vitamin A and D, but the fats that have vitamin A and D are a little bit of butter or ghee. <clears throat> okay, okay. Um, a cod liver oil has... Um, Ancient remedy. Uh, yeah, and also um, palm oil has, is a source of vitamin A and E, so huh. that's good too. Coconut oil isn't, isn't a source of A or, or D, but it's very, very good for... Uh, the thyroid, and you can even rub coconut oil all over your neck. It's good for the neck, for the skin, yeah. and to help you know tone it and everything. But the thyroid's right there in the neck, mm -hmm. so it's really good to put the coconut oil right on your neck. Interesting. Too, yeah. well, that's a great idea. You, you absorb it through your skin. Um, you can do that in the shower. The, yeah, yeah, and, and, and you uh, it bypasses the liver, so immediately goes in and feeds the thyroid. Okay. But so you have to feed both of both of them. Um, I think the biggest damage. Uh, Again, diet, you know, sugar and gluten and dairy really are inappropriate foods. Uh huh. But um, actually, you know, right now with the big paleo thing, mm -hmm. I mean, everybody going paleo mm -hmm. and doing a whole bunch of protein and they're cutting all carbs from their diet. And doing vegetables, paleo, right? Cutting completely carbs out is harmful for the thyroid and the adrenals. They need a little bit of uh, car carbs. They have to be the right slow carbs. Slow right? release carbs. So on body ecology, we start people off on quinoa, millet, buckwheat, amaranth. And then later, <clears throat> when they've got a real healthy gut microbiome and all their symptoms are gone, we um, say, okay, now it's time to bring in oats are very good, uh, whole oats, so not oatmeal. I'm not a big fan of oatmeal because when they make oatmeal, they bring all this, these oats in from the field and they slash them up and pack them in a box and they haven't been very, they're not clean. Okay. So I like for people to buy the whole oats, which looks like a little grain of rice, and oh. you wash them and soak them to remove the phytic acid, and then you cook them, and they're really, really delicious. Oh, that's what the real oatmeal looks yeah. like. Yeah, that's where the oatmeal comes from, but you really are, are way better off having the whole oats. And then rice, um, as a matter of fact, there's a new rice available called sprouted brown rice or GABA rice, Okay. and it actually helps produce GABA. So... In body ecology, we're having those type of foods in the evening meal with a lot of vegetables and fermented vegetables. And what is GABA? And you sleep better. GABA, well, GABA is, is a brain chemical okay. that um, help. It's, it's the anti-anxiety brain chemical. We feel much much calmer when we either take GABA nice. or we take a food that's rich in GABA, like the sprouted brown rice. Um, can you eat buckwheat if you are gluten intolerant? Uh, yeah, buckwheat. Yes. Uh huh. 
Yeah, they're, they're, they're really, it's a seed. Okay. Uh, quinoa, millet, buckwheat, amaranth, they're really seeds. Okay, and that's what you say in terms of slow-burning carbs. Yeah, the, those are an example of the first stage, but another uh, slow-burning carb would be rice, would be oatmeal. I don't ever encourage people to put the gluten grains back in, like mm-hmm. wheat and rye and kamut and so on. Right. But, you know, there's some alternative things you can use. Like if you can probably get it on, on the Internet, but you can get red rice. It's a, it's more yeah. popular among the Chinese. They have it at um, health food stores. Oh, they do now? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I've, I've seen Ron T. Garden has it in mm-hmm. his shops. But it's, it's really excellent. sticky. It's thicky. It's thick rice. Yeah, it's really it's, good. It's, it's definitely slow release, very medicinal rice, good for the adrenals, nice. good for blood, blood tonic. So I've seen you mention adrenals and thyroid. Oh, yeah. In connection with hormones, mm-hmm. what do the adrenals and the thyroid have to do with the hormones? Okay, so the adrenals produce the hormones we hear about all the time: um, testosterone, and uh, well, for women, it's some um, estrogen, progesterone. Uh, other ones you don't hear about as much, like pregnenolone and mm. DHEA. Mm. Um, and then the ovaries do as well. But as women get older and they go through menopause, the ovaries aren't as productive. They don't necessarily 100% shut down, although, you know, some doctors make women believe that their ovaries become like little raisins that kind right. of dry up and just, hang, you know, shrivel up. That doesn't happen? That's not true. <laughs> Thank no. you. you. You can keep your ovaries nice and, you know, whole, and they won't be as functioning, producing the amount of hormones they used to, but estrogen and progesterone they used to produce. But if they don't, for some reason, if you've had them removed, you've got to rely on your adrenals. So they have to be strong and healthy so that they can produce the hormones. And then the thyroid is producing um, T4, Mm -hmm. the thyroid hormone T4. The thyroid gets a signal from the pituitary gland that says the pituitary makes something called TSH, which is a signal that says to the thyroid, make more, make hormones, make T4. But that T4 has to be, it's it's inactive at that moment. It has to be converted into T3. Mm -hmm. In order for that to happen, uh, you have to have a healthy thyroid, but T3 mostly is converted, T4 is mostly converted to T3 in the liver. So you need to have a healthy liver, Okay. Okay. which we should talk about. And very, very important, 20% of the T4 is converted to T3 in the gut. So you have to have a healthy gut okay. to have a healthy thyroid. Okay. okay, so I understand that thyroid disorders are one of the most underdiagnosed issues for women and men, and this could be hyperthyroidism or Mm -hmm. hypothyroidism. Mm -hmm. How would people know if they have a thyroid disorder? You have to test. Okay. And a thyroid test is a blood test. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you test with saliva for hormones. Sometimes you use the urine, but for the thyroid, it's a blood test. This is so empowering for women because you said to me earlier that women can really be their best health detective. Mm -hmm. This is a conversation that we mostly put off to the doctor, but Mm -hmm. if we understand Mm -hmm. a lot of this, you could go to your doctor, you can say, look, I need a T3 and T4 test. Mm -hmm. Can you test for the TSH? Mm -hmm. And then you could find out your own levels. They will test for the THA. All doctors have been trained or they'll order the test for TSH, but that doesn't really tell you anything. Okay. But I've had for years women say to me, I had my, my doctor did test for my thyroid hormones and my doctor said that my thyroid's fine. And that's because the, um, they tested the TSH and it looks okay, but they didn't test T4. Is the thyroid making T4 oh. like it's supposed to? Yeah. And very importantly, is the T4, the four turning into three, the active form of the, it has to turn into. T3 to go into our cells and give our cells energy, and then the cells have to accept it. And there's a big, big breakdown right there because many people will even have normal thyroid tests. The TSH looks great, the T4 looks great, the T3 looks great. They still have the symptoms of hypothyroidism, and that's because it's not getting into the cells. One of the things that keeps it from getting into the cells is a gut problem. Uh, and, and it's a big, it's very much related to. Um, Hashimoto's, mm-hmm. which is an autoimmune condition. Mm-hmm. It's supposed to be the number one uh, thyroid problem in America today and in the Western world. Which is why so many people complain of being tired mm-hmm. and fatigued. Dry skin, constipation. Split Another nails. sign is, I always look for this, even in men you see it, the last third of the eyebrow is missing. Yes. Um, that's for sure a sign. Yeah. Yeah, the, skin, the nails are weak. Mm-hmm. 
So this, okay, so now let's talk about how to balance this, how to balance the the thyroid, the adrenals, and the hormones. And well, if you find that if you find a really good doctor who's trained in uh, hormones, and it takes it's, it's a complicated subject. It's actually it's complicated because we're all unique, and so you mm-hmm. need to be able to look at all the different possible ways the thyroid could be not working right. And and the average doctor isn't trained in that. So you, you go really to an endocrinologist, to go to a functional uh, medicine doctor. I think not even an endocrinologist. I really think. If you go to an endocrinologist because you think you have diabetes, let's you should still find a, do- a functional medicine doctor who's trained in bioidentical hormone therapy. So it's now, an FMD, a functional medicine doctor. Okay, yeah. mm-hmm. they're okay. either trained through A4M or Institute of Functional Medicine. Okay, they have amazing, extensive training. Okay, and then there are also programs for them just to focus on hormones, and that's even better. But um, the th- but uh, the thing is, is that. You know, the, a good functional medicine doctor will first and foremost put you on, do other things before they put you on bioidentical hormones. That's their last resort. Okay. They would rather you change your diet. They love to work with women that are, that are first of all, educated and yes. will sit across the table from them and discuss their hormones and make a plan together. That's what a good functional medicine doctor will do. They, they're they very caring. I've noticed that women really need to get engaged in their own healing conversation. That's just... what I see as a big, big problem. And it's our fault because we don't, we think it's not in our realm of possibility to learn something like this, but it certainly is. So it's our responsibility yeah. to become knowledgeable enough to talk to the es- expert and make a plan based uh-huh. on what the test results say. So the tests are, are priceless. You can go to the doctor, he can order the tests, but you can also go to a website like ZRT Labs. Uh, Z- David Zaba is a wonderful man, uh, developed saliva testing and now blood spot testing as well. Huh. And they have a great um, uh, test that you can order online and they'll send you, um, like, a, like for example, the blood spot testing is very cool. You get a little pricker thing Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you prick your Uh finger get a little blood and put it on the card and Uh send it back in and they'll send you back your test results and it's that's great for everything good to know i did that for food allergies well you want to um monitor maybe you Mm. don't want to go see the doctor all the time right if you start taking thyroid hormone if you're starting to change your diet and you you monitor your thyroid every six weeks every several months that's great then you um you can say, okay, I'm on the right path. That is a great idea. Then you'd have to pay for constant doctor visits for mm-hmm. something that insurance isn't going to cover anyway. You can no, they don't. just just for the monitoring part of it, you can get the range that your thyroid, your T3, mm-hmm. T4, mm-hmm. and TSH should mm-hmm. be in. The mm-hmm. doctor will tell you your normal range. Mm-hmm. Get your initial test by the doctor, and then do your own checkups, making sure you're in the same range mm-hmm. that well, whatever you're doing is working. Okay, but the test results when they come back, they'll have your range. So let's just, I'll make up a number, I don't know the range, but let's say um, the range is from two to 50 or something. Two to four or so, yeah, yeah. it's a small well, range. Yeah. A lot of times the doctor will, you'll be down here like at four and mm-hmm. the reference range, the low point is two, and you're four and the doctor's, you're not under two though, so the doctor says you're fine, mm. but you're not fine unless you're in the middle of that reference range. So you should be able to look at the reference range yourself, find the middle point and see if you're close to that if you're close to the bottom, you're you're in trouble. Okay. Another thing that happens too is, you know, who, who were we when we were, say, 20, when our hormones were maybe at their peak? Mm-hmm. So a woman could have uh, her testosterone tested to see how, you know, she lost her sex drive and she has her testosterone tested. So she gets this reference range and she's down here kind of low, not under maybe, but she's kind of low. And... So she should be in the middle, but also what's normal for her when she was 20? She, at 20, she might have been quite high. Mm-hmm. She might have had a lot of testosterone in her body, and so it's a significant drop for her. I really recommend that young women, like if I had a daughter oh, who I was see. 20 years old, like my youngest my youngest is 23 and has his friends, I would love for all of them to go get their hormones tested right now, and they have a reference range. So in 10 years, 20 years, 50 years, they can look back and say, this is my normal. That's, that's That would be great. That's a me. great idea. Yeah. And now what are hot flashes? Why do those occur in women? They're definitely, well, they're, they're definitely a sign of a hormone imbalance, but the real bottom 
uh, when you keep going back and back and back to the bottom, it's, it has to do usually with adrenal fatigue, like mm. burnout, you're tired. Um, you know, the first, when you, when you talk about your adrenals, and that's another test you can get. You can get a test that shows you how your, just your adrenals are doing called the adrenal stress test. But um, hmm. it, it, so it, it, you have your um, hormones tested. It's a saliva test also, very simple test okay. to do. And the first stage is that you are tired, but um, everything's holding. Your DHEA is good. Your cortisol levels are normal like they're supposed to be. The next stage is when you're tired um, and your DHEA has, you're, you still, they're both stages are tired, but your DHEA now has begun to cl- decline. Mm-hmm. And the last stage, when you're really in burnal, adrenal burnout, your cortisol levels are flatlined and your DHEA, DHEA is very low. Okay. And so you know at that stage, it's, it's going to be a one, at least one to two years to come back from that. Huh. Wow, it takes that long. It takes that long. To rebuild yeah, so this Yeah, so anybody's naive to think a month or two and they're going to be fine. And it's a really active, I mean, you have to actively work to bring your adrenals back up from that stage again. So what do you suggest? And we have a protocol that, thank goodness, you've put together for how to balance your hormones. And this is also to do with balancing your adrenals, mm-hmm. with the balancing your thyroid, and with balancing... Um, well, I guess that will regulate the hormones in general, right? Well, that's where you start. Okay. This is feeding them. Okay. Uh, the first thing you need to do is give, take out all the junk, the gluten and the mm-hmm. sugar and mm-hmm. the dairy. The second thing you need to do is feed them properly. And they do need a mineral-rich diet, B vitamins, vitamin C, good fats. So it's, it's great because Body Ecology is doing that. Like instead of worrying about how to do that, just yeah. do Body Ecology well. Because, like for example, the use of fermented foods... You're, you're fixing the gut. That's so important. Mm. A lot of the problems are coming from a bad gut. The mm-hmm. thyroid problems are coming from a bad gut. The, the liver is influenced by the, bad, the toxic gut. So fix your gut. Okay. Like we talked about before. First and foremost, fix the gut. And you also said sleep. Sleep is hugely mm-hmm. important. That's the first step. Is Now, what does yeah. sleep do? So, so again, interestingly enough, people with weak adrenals don't sleep well. And if you need it, if you, uh, so mm. you have to look and think, why am I not sleeping? Is it because of something I'm doing? Or am I, uh, do I have adrenal fatigue, really severe adrenal fatigue? Because those people do not sleep well. And then there are things you can take to help you sleep. One of my favorite um, protocol things for that is theanine and GABA. I like, I actually have some here. This is a Zymogen product and it's a strong theanine. It's 400 milligrams, which would be really effective. You need to take three of these in the morning and three at bedtime. So you're getting 1,200 and 1,200. That's wow. when people take theanine, they take to uh, limit, they don't take enough of it to be really okay. effective. What is it? Is it an amino acid? Or? Yeah, it's an amino acid okay. and it's in green tea, but this is just a stronger oh. dose. And it's very, very, okay. um, has a calming effect on the brain. It keeps the brain from chattering. Oh. So, so for pe- when people get into bed and their mind is just chattering away and they can't stop yeah. it. This is what you want to take. And then with it, you can take GABA. Wait, quick question. Okay. Is that when people wake up around 2 or 3 in the morning, is that a certain That's usually drop because in- the cortisol. Now, people that, interestingly enough, people that don't have enough cortisol during the day, very often their cortisol rises up at the wrong time, like when they're sleeping at 2 or 3 in the morning. Oh. And so they wake up. They're really tired. They really haven't had enough to sleep, enough time to sleep. So they're... St- tired and then they wake up, but they can't go back to sleep again. For that, I like to give people phosphatidylserine, uh, PS it's called, mm-hmm. and it's uh, this company, Cymogen uh, has it too, and other companies too. It lowers cortisol, as does um, holy basil. You can huh. have a few, a couple of holy, holy basil Does it help you sleep better? You'll fall back asleep uh, again in about 20, 30 minutes. You'll, you'll, it'll bring your cortisol levels down and you'll fall back to sleep and get a Ah. Full night's sleep. So that's really important. Phosphatidylserine. But the, the real cause, again, <clears throat> is something you're doing in your life. You've got too much stress. You're not doing the basic things like getting out and exercising. That helps so much with stress. Yes. And or other things like meditating and yoga, walking. Just walking is great to do mm-hmm. for the gut and for stress and for the brain. It helps everything. Uh, walking is great. And then, you know, so, so, uh, and then watching what you're doing. Are you watching exciting shows at night? Uh-huh. Because they are addictive and you'll keep, you know, they make you come back for the next 
week's, because they leave right. you dangling in this week's series, that, you know, show. Yes. So you can, oh my God, I got to get back and find out what happened to them on yeah. the next show. But there's, there are shows that raise your cortisol levels up and we take that to bed with us. And between that and people checking their emails at night, that I think is a huge, huge problem. To so keep it's people our awake, yeah. Lifestyle changes have to be made there. That's not your hormones, that's you. Okay. So these are some products that you mentioned for hormone regulating, this particular one. Well, um, interestingly, um, this one I, I wanted to talk about because it's, again, a Zymogen product, but it's called Hormone Protect. Mm -hmm. It's really a broccoli, mostly a, something called DEM and something called broccoli seed extract. Mm -hmm. And you actually get this from eating cultured vegetables too. Okay. So I personally don't take this product. Mm -hmm. um, you know, because I have the cultured foods in my diet, yeah. but for people who don't or uh -huh. aren't going to eat them, this is a really important product. And what it does is it clears that excess estrogen. Now, estrogen is something that needs to be made by our body uh -huh. and goes to the liver and it, it goes uh, into the bile and into the stool and it's supposed to leave our body uh -huh. because it's used up estrogen. Uh -huh. But what happens for many, many women is it doesn't leave and it gets acted upon by a substance in the gut and recirculated back into the body. And so many, many women have today's estrogen, yesterday's estrogen, the day before is estrogen. Which is that's when they get in trouble. Extremely toxic. Yes. Yeah. They, they yes. start to have all I went kinds through of that. hot flashes mm -hmm. and miserable mm -hmm. symptoms and I went through sleep. the whole idea of getting the bioidenticals and not even realizing that I was completely allergic to them because mm -hmm. the doctor didn't test my body to see mm -hmm. if it was going to work for me or not. He just prescribed mm -hmm. it like he had for 80,000 other people yeah. and not me. And so this well, there's was... There's lots and lots of people like you. And it's interesting. You use How the do you know? Allergy yeah. Because it isn't really an allergy. An allergy is like a peanut allergy where you go in. That's what it felt like. But what was it? Yeah. Well, what it really is, is that inability of your body to clear the estrogen. Uh. And so that's why I also brought these two products. And we didn't talk that much about cleansing and detoxification, but I really go into cleansing from a whole different perspective uh, more in much more de depth in this book I just finished. But um, I really want people to understand this. It's very important. If you're going to talk about hormones, you have to talk about this. Okay. Uh, and detoxification. That is, yes, that we have to detoxify our hormones. We can't just make them and keep them circulating. They have to clear the body. They have to or we get in trouble. So what's happening in stage one, all, all the hormones and every other toxin in our goes through uh, and that goes into our body or that we make in our body goes then to the liver. And in stage one, the liver breaks them apart. And actually at that moment, they're more dangerous than they were before. They're actually more dangerous. Okay. So that's okay. The liver's got a plan, plan B. And it comes at you, uh, stage two, this is where a bunch of molecules are glumped onto the estrogen and other uh, toxins and things and they're made heavy and the liver makes bile and puts them in there and hands them over to the gallbladder and says hang on to this bile until we eat and when we do the liver uh, the bile the gallbladder drops the bile down into the small intestine okay and there it helps us digest digest our fats mm. but also it stimulates peristaltic movement so everything says to keep right on moving on out of that very long digestive tract mm -hmm. that we have. And, and so there's a breakdown uh, in that stage one and stage two in many, many people. Uh, too many people have an upregulated stage one where they break the toxins apart so efficiently, but their stage two isn't working to get rid of them. Wow. And that's why these products are so special because... Uh, oh, and then the, another thing, well, that's what this is, this Xeno protects right here by Zymogen. It's, it's just simply natural things like um, turmeric and green tea and inositalcysteine, milk thistle, and so on, that um, they, they help mm. in both stage one and stage two. So I have had so many people tell me, I put people on a program using these products, and I've had people tell me it literally changed their life because now they can do what's called methylate. Now, we talked a little bit about, you asked me a question about methylation yeah. before. Methylation is a word that people need to become more, don't be afraid of it when you start hearing about it. It's a cycle in our body that is very important. It's a function that our body is going, is happening inside of our body. And it's, um, it, it's connected to making our neurotransmitters. Uh. 
uh, if we don't, you know, fertility, um, our brain chemicals um, like serotonin and dopamine and all aren't made properly, so we can become very depressed or even have bipolar. Is it a and detoxification? We don't detoxify. Is that we what don't. it is? Methylation. Well, is- and one of its one of the purposes or the things that's happening with methylation is it's detoxifying. Okay. Now, so many people when they go and have their genes tested, particularly if they have. Um, certain groups of people like from Mexico, from Italy, for example, there's mm-hmm. certain groups of people that have a huge amount of the population have a variation and they don't have the ability to make a gene called MTHFR. It's its okay. name, MTHF. It's got a long name, but that's okay. what it's called, MTHFR. And all you have to do to fix this gene, uh, it's, this gene keeps you from making folate. Oh. Folate, which you find in dark green leafy vegetables, mm-hmm. which bacteria make, and so on. We, those people aren't making folate. So they need to take methylfolate, methyl B12, oh. riboflavin, and a certain form of B6. Interesting. That's what's in this product here, okay. methyl protect by Zymogen. It's those B vitamins. And again, you take these one or two or three of these. All of a sudden, it's like putting a key into the lock and bang. Wow. You methylate. In other words, you detoxify. You make brain chemicals properly. A lot of women are getting pre- uh, pregnant because uh-huh. they, of something as simple as this. Okay. Um, if a woman has a baby that has spina bifida, if she has cleft palate baby, those are extreme examples of this deficiency. But many people have much milder symptoms mm. of that. And it's so fixable wow. with a simple supplement. But that's probably, I would bet money, Lisa, that if you went and had your genes tested, you'd have some kind of issue with the MTHFR, as millions of people do. And, and then, then you can more safely take the bioidentical hormones, estrogen, if you and need knowing to that you're clearing point. it. If I you see. need to, and some people do. Uh, something important to know is that... Um, Estradiol, there's three estrogens that you need to know about. One of them is estradiol. And if you, it's very critical for your brain to work. Like a, as, her, oh, as a woman's estradiol goes down, so does her memory. Mm. So let's say that in her mm-hmm. 50s, she's having declining levels of estradiol. But in her 60s, she's like fed up with it, decides, you know, wants to go and see a doctor. He puts her on estradiol. The 10 years or so in between of memory loss yeah. is not reclaimable. Wow. No, you don't, but you can start there feeling much better. Yeah. If you need it and you're taking it, you feel so much better. The reason I say this is women are scared to death of estrogen today. And that's because uh-huh. in the past, the estrogen that women were using for decades was a synthetic, was from horses urine right and, and it was a synthetic progesterone. And that's what's been causing the breast cancer. And that in was many what ways. was causing the problems. Mm-hmm. But bioidentical, uh, hormones properly used and that's the key and that's why you and your doctor need to work together yes you can't just run to the doctor get some creams, no, hormone creams yeah and then not test anymore you want to come right. back soon like in maybe six or eight weeks or three weeks months at the most test again mm-hmm. i would send you back sooner than yeah. three months but oh, yeah. um and then adjust and then we then you soon you'll get your Perfect. So do you need amount? a combination of estrogen, estradiol, progesterone, and testosterone? Does maybe, every woman maybe. need all oh, Myself, I take your... only progesterone. Okay. And, um, and I don't take anything else, but that's for me. Mm-hmm. Um, in the world of a woman, if she had no stress in her life, yeah. if she had like friends and family that were all wonderful and perfect, she yeah. had never had any you know, arguments with them. And, all the money she ever needed in the world, she's a good candidate for not needing hormones. Okay. <laughs> but for the rest of us that live in the world, yes. real world, <laughs> yes, then yes. probably the you know cortisol goes up with stress. That totally screws up your hormones. Yeah. For example, whenever you can be certain that whenever you're stressed out, you're making cortisol, and your T4 is not converting into T3 at that moment. Mm-hmm. So you are going to be hypothyroid at that moment. Take the thyroid down. You've also just taken down the adrenals. So you've just lost your energy. So cortisol depletes DHEA and all the other, your whole adrenals are shot, you know. So um, so stress is really bad and most of us have a lot of stress. Yes. And also most of us have yeast infections in our body today. Um, and one of the um, toxins that the yeast produce, acetaldehyde, is another chemical 
that prevents T4 from becoming T3. And so you don't, this is the, T3 is the active thyroid. If T4 doesn't become T3 mm-hmm. because of the acetaldehyde from the yeast, you oh, don't have I energy. See. Okay. So get rid of your yeast infection and then watch your thyroid balance itself out. There's so many energy, energy killers that you have just mentioned. Mm-hmm. So many things that are taking your thyroid down and are taking your adrenals down that yes. before you go for hormones, replacement, mm-hmm. fix the other thing first and mm-hmm. see if you even need them. You mm-hmm. may not need them. That makes the most sense. And the whole point of this conversation is to empower women to understand this conversation and watch this over again if you need to so that you can oh, yeah. understand what yeah. we're talking about. And it's an education, but it is so vital. It's well, our body. I knew it was important to learn this yeah. for myself, for every woman, every man, that every child, every pregnant. I knew I had to understand yeah. hormones. And so I started yes. taking courses in it, and it was just over my head. I mean, I picked up little pieces here and there, and right. I never figured. I wondered, could I ever, ever tie all this together? Will it ever make sense to me? How did it? Well, because you keep, you just hang in there. Right. And then it's like learning right. another language. After a while, it, you start, it just sort of fixes, puts together, it's, it puts well, itself together in your head. When it's your own body, you start to live the effects of it, and you mm-hmm. will either fix mm-hmm. it or not. Mm-hmm. But you don't need to be a prisoner in your own body. Sometimes or that's a victim. what... That's a what, victim of the fact that we're getting older, our body could be wearing out. Mm-hmm. You know that it's true. We are getting older, and our organs do tend to decline as we age. So therefore, they're not producing these hormones like they normally did when we were young. But you don't have to go there. But would you say that the reason that um, that people over uh, sixty have or fifty and sixty have decreasing sex drive and oh, yeah. lack of memory is mm-hmm. because of the lack of estrogen? Uh, and, well. Well, they're all so interrelated oh, okay. to me. Like, like for example, if a woman's not sleeping, um, then progesterone orally in a little capsule helps. That's the best sleep. thing for sleep, mm-hmm. one or two of those a night. Uh, and then, What's the best thing for libido, for sex drive? Really, it's your testosterone and estrogen okay. together, but especially testosterone. In women and men? Yes, and um, for sure, men for sure, and we should talk about men separately. Yes, let's talk about men. They have the same issues with methylation. Like there's a whole, men equally could be po- not detoxifying their hormones and becoming too estrogen dominant. And their testosterone goes down uh, really early these days. It's, From stress. It's shocking actually mm-hmm. to the medical profession that now in the um, 20, late 20s, men are low in testosterone. But you do not want, if you're, I know, uh, a young man that's in his very, you know, just coming out of his 20s. He's been on testosterone for years because he wanted the mm-hmm. muscles. and the, mm-hmm. it, it makes a man feel very powerful, mm-hmm. you know, and fire energy. That's where the fire energy comes from in a man is from his testosterone. Mm-hmm. And so um, he's been taking it, but it will. It, it's very cl- clearly understood that it makes a man infertile. So you don't want to give, um, uh, once again, if a man comes to a doctor with low t- testosterone, the first thing you do is get him off the beer and the Diet Coke and the, whatever he's eating and Pepsis and uh, sugar, mm-hmm. uh, pizzas. And the, most of them are at that age still eating that way. Yeah. And that's the cause of the low testosterone. But um, then nowadays, by the mid-40s, men have a declining testosterone level women need to know that because if you fell in love with this guy because he was like real sexy and you had great sex life and you're not now not even interested in each other anymore the way a relationship is kept alive is by that intimate connection and mm-hmm. it should always be there even mm-hmm. when you're 100 years old you mm-hmm. should be able to make love with each other maybe not as frequently at 80 yeah <laughs> as at 20 but you should definitely be making love and, and so that, that's what happens in relationships is the man's not interested anymore, the woman's not interested. So women are the ones who are first probably going to notice that the man that was so sexy and wanted to make lo- love to her all mm-hmm. the time isn't interested anymore. She, and he's grumpier and a little bit, you know, like doesn't have, he wants to sit on the sofa and watch TV and eat chips or something. You know, she needs to know that's what's happening to him is testosterone is going down. And just by handling that, by getting it up naturally, you can also use Chinese herbs. They're fantastic for that. So you could start off by just overall cooking healthy for the family and getting all the wheat 
dairy and sugar out of the house, yeah. getting the cultured vegetables mm -hmm. into almost every meal, along yes. with the right types of grains that are slow burning, and the body ecology system. And meat. I mean, animal protein is needed mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. testosterone. So a man who chooses to become a vegetarian is going to be a little more soft and wonderful, thoughtful, dear, considerate person, but he won't he won't have the testosterone that a man who's eating meat will have. Interesting. Well, mm -hmm. all of this really boils down to food. It all goes back to the whole idea That's of the basics. What the what the body ecology yeah. system is about. And I'm so glad we had this conversation about hormones. Now, is there a magic bullet that anybody that can use where um, we've talked a lot about stem cell therapy? And is that something that could actually balance hormones? Um, well, stem cell therapy is really expensive, like maybe $20,000 to go have a series of stem cells. And they're really for seriously injured people that maybe have spinal cord injuries or MS or some more serious problem. But for the rest of us that are, you know, just wanting support, what's been used in years in Europe, almost 90 years now, is wow. cell therapy, which is actually fetal uh, cells from the sheep. Or sometimes they use other animals like rabbits and cows and all. But um, the, the sheep is the most common one. And so they literally cr uh, grow for 80 years or so, raise a um, herd of sheep, and they take the fetuses, and you know, probably everybody's thinking it's awful, but we do eat meat, you know, we do. It's the same thing, it's just that they're taken out of the womb early. And then they take um, the DNA from the cells of every single organ, your eyes, your brain. Uh, and so people, you can, the one I've been taking, these, the cell therapy, as millions of people do in Europe for mm -hmm. know, eight or nine or 10 times, but they, they're, um, they're very rejuvenative, and they go into your organ. When you put them in you, they're, uh -huh. they're put in intramuscularly, and then they go right into your cells. And if they're uh, the ones that are supposed to go into the adrenals, go right there. They're in their organs mm -hmm. in about 60 minutes, 90 minutes. Wow. And then they give new energy, new life. new, new They help program the adrenals and the thyroid and the brain and the lungs and the liver and or if you have problems with your eyes, you know, eyes spinal well. cord, bones, everything, you know, mm. they have it all. And you can take the um, cell therapy for, for the different organs um, now, and does rejuvenate. That, does it and help that, with hormones as well? Well, you know what helps with hormones? It's also taken from the same animal as the placenta. And that's what women all over Europe use. A lot of celebrities here use the placenta. It gives you tremendous energy and it's wonderful for balancing the hormones. It makes your skin beautiful. Mm. But, but the first thing you, probably everybody notices is an increase in energy because of the rejuvenation that is going on from the placenta. You know, and again, you know, to us, right. to many people here in America, they're thinking, oh, my God, that sounds like something from Mars. But it's commonly it's used in Europe, and we're just progressive. Talked, nobody talks about it. Right. It's very, very progressive here. It's being used a lot more here. It's, it's growing by leaps mm -hmm. and bounds. But my question is, does the cell from the sheep, the animal cell, translate into the human cell to replicate? Does it, mm -hmm. How does yeah, it cause... Yeah, at the very, very beginning in the fetal stage, there is no difference between our cells and the sheep cell or a cow cell. There are, at the very beginning, it looks identical. And so, so they it's will, easy to move them back and forth. So the, by, by injecting these cells, it actually causes your own cell to replicate in a healthy manner. It's really kind of like putting new... Parts. Like let's say you had a car that was wearing down, uh -huh, uh -huh. and you came along and you put new spare tires on it, and later, and then you put a new engine in and a new mm -hmm. paint job or something. It's like adding new spare parts back into your body because it actually has mitochondria and all of the things that a cell, the human cell, has. It, it has information too. It has the information of what y young is. You know, so in a homeopathic young. way. No, no, it's actually really... Um, Cellular. It's really going in. It's the DNA. It's like brand new parts going into your adrenals. And they, oh, here's what young was like, you know. And mm -hmm. so they perk up. And uh, they also can grow and multiply those cells too I've, over I've, time. That's why at the three months, if you take them now in three months, that you'll have noticed more benefits from them because they've had more time to mm -hmm. help that organ regenerate. I've read about medical vacations where you can mm -hmm. go on yeah, this. Yeah, people are doing that, leaving the country. Mm -hmm. But they're extremely expensive. So these types of protocols are being done here in the States now. 
You know, our government is still uh, fighting our doctors against it, but um, there's a, and people are still leaving, but it can be done here, and people are doing it. Fascinating. I don't get anyone in trouble by saying that, yeah. but you know, no, it can hold back a good thing. I mean, it's yeah. we have too many aging people every year. Thousands, and tens of thousands of baby boomers are, you know, turning a year older, passing that age of 65. Yeah, and they don't want to lose their mind. They notice their memory slipping, so they. They, if yes. this is something they can do to make their brain sharper, uh, their liver work better, their adrenals, their thyroid, their skin prettier. You well, know? If we could look and like you, balance. it'd be great. <laughs> well, well, I and talk like you, but no, no, they, we we have to do this. We have to stay healthy. We have to. It's our responsibility. No one's going to do it for us. So I, I'm very grateful that we're getting to have these conversations. Yeah. Yep, absolutely. How can I get this out otherwise? Yes, and thank you very much for supporting us and empowering us to have this conversation and to teach us exactly what we need to know. Just a little bit of knowledge goes a long way. Rinse it and suck it for eight. Rinse it and suck it for eight hours. Thank you very much. Now I know how to cook quinoa. Mm -hmm. And we're going to come right back and we're going to make a, a butternut squash ginger soup. And Donna's going to show us how to do that. So we'll throw up the recipe right now. You can take a look at it. And we're going to start cooking. All right, so we have reset for the butternut squash ginger soup. Now, Donna, tell us the importance of using root vegetables to cook. Well, there are different types of vegetables. There's your leafy greens, mm -hmm. your root vegetables. That means they grow below the ground where leafy greens grow above the ground. And you really want to have a wide variety of vegetables in your diet. Um, seven, eight, ten servings a day is not too much at all. And as a matter of fact, that's great. But in order to do that, you've got to, you know, get all types of vegetables. So right here in this one soup recipe, we've got four root vegetables. We've got carrots. These all, these all, they're root vegetables because they grow below okay. the ground. So we have carrots, uh, onions, garlic, and ginger. So all those grow below the ground. Okay. And then the butternut squash belongs to the squash family, the winter squash family, like acorn squash, and there's a bunch of, bunch of them actually. And, and these so, are also great for digestion, right? Um, well, you know, actually in Chinese medicine, these are actually considered good for the spleen stomach meridian. In other words, that would be for digestion. Okay. They, they have a sweet taste, and that, that particular meridian needs a little bit of natural sweetness from plants. So you're absolutely right about that. Great. Okay, so we're going to make this soup. Now, this is really easy, which is something that I really mm -hmm. love about it because mm -hmm. I'm not the greatest cook, and I'm learning to be a great cook with Donna. So, all right, what do we start with here? Well, we started off by putting uh, the onions in the soup, but I, I first put the ghee in. Okay. And if I were adding a spice to this, I would add the spice into the ghee. So I'd melt the ghee. Let's say I was adding uh, pumpkin spice, pie spice, or uh, uh, ginger, or something dried. Okay. And I wanted to... Um, then the best thing to do is add your spice right into the hot ghee because what happens is the ghee, the, the spices or the whatever your, you know, your herbs are, they're releasing their medicinal essence right into the oil. So you would add, did you say pumpkin spice? Well, actually, believe it or not, with these ingredients, pumpkin pie Wait. spice actually tastes quite good. Never heard of that. Pumpkin, yeah. pumpkin yeah. pie spice. You can't uh -huh. really say it. <laughs> yeah. Sounds great. Oh, yeah. They have that in the store. They have everything. So whatever your spices are, uh -huh. release. That's a little trick that make the food more medicinal. That's a great so idea. release, you know, put them in the ghee or the oil, mm -hmm. and then re they will release their medicinal essences into the oil. Okay. Now, when the onions have gotten soft and translucent, you're ready to add everything else. Okay. So that's how easy this soup is. So we 
We put in the carrots, we put in the squash. Let's put it all in here. So we've got the butternut squash, mm -hmm. you've got add your carrots, mm -hmm. and then we already, we already did the, sauteed the onions. The onions so are already the sauteed. Already. You just simply add in your ginger root. Uh, garlic and ginger and all at the same time. So super, super easy. Now here's a beautiful ginger root. This is what we did is just um, mm -hmm. grated it. Well, I, I peeled it and just real quickly grated it. And you know what? We're going to puree this. Okay. So nothing has to be chopped fine. You just need to get it in here. Okay. And so I just basically peeled it and chopped it quickly and put it in here. Okay. And put it in there, you know, put it in there. Actually. So for the purposes of video, we have now taken this and put it into our, our beautiful soup and added water. So it has to have the water over it to cook. Okay, so you add mm -hmm. the whole vegetables, these chopped up vegetables in there. They start to now uh, get soft through the cooking process after you've added your water. When do you and, add the And besides salt? the water, you also want to add your salt. So you okay. add in a, your salt at that time, Great. which you think is about the right amount. Okay. You know, salt is an interesting uh, substance because each one of us has a different need for salt. People that are more adrenal fatigued are mm -hmm. going to want more salt in their food. Mm -hmm. Now, you can't fix the adrenal fatigue problem by eating salt, but it's a sign that you are more adrenal deficient. You and know? no table salt, you're definitely sticking with the Celtic, the Celtic sea, salt. sea salt. Absolutely, because okay. it's really good. It comes from France, and they analyze it all the time. It's very high in minerals. Minerals. And by the way, it doesn't have iodine. So sea oh, salt doesn't have iodine. Right. People right. might wonder that sometimes. So you okay. want to have uh, kelp, uh, or, you know, take an ocean plant extract like ours or eat the sea vegetables. Now, I do love, one, they have a product at Celtic Sea Salt. It's Selena Naturally. SelenaNaturally.com. They've actually taken the Celtic Sea Salt and put it with a bunch of sea vegetables. And it's an absolutely delicious seasoning. Nice. I love, to, I Very love nice. that seasoning. Now, you can add things to this like uh, sea vegetables, like the wakame, or mm -hmm. can you even sprinkle dulse in here? And, and uh, add you could at the end. But okay. this is going to tend to be a little bit sweeter. Okay. So if I okay. added a sea vegetable, I probably would add the arame. Okay. Because it's a little bit sweeter. I know, but, you know, maybe even a little bit on top is a garnish. Oh, that's nice. Uh, too. Yeah. And because uh, we are going to, you can garnish this with different things. Great but, idea. Um, I don't okay. know if I'd put the sea vegetable in this one, except if I did, well, another one that you might use is wakame because okay. it's soft. And okay. So now this is a... Uh, Quite a few, several companies make mm -hmm. these... Uh, handheld blenders, basically. Okay. Immersion blenders, they're called. They're very inexpensive and very, very useful because before they had these, you'd take this and put it in your blender and blend it up and add it back in. Right, the pot. right, right. This is a now great idea. Now you can idea. blend right in the pot and it just takes seconds. And honestly, this soup is a 20 minute soup. So, it's so easy. fast. I love this. Okay, so now I'm going to blend this up here. It's going to make a little bit of noise, so we're going to get this. Basically, I'm going to get completely messed up. But what it looks like in the end is this beautiful soup. And here it is. Now, what Donna did is she, she sprinkled a little bit of pumpkin seed oil Pumpkin seed mm -hmm. oil on it. It's a nice flavor. Which is really nice. It gives it a garnish. You can also garnish with it with what you mentioned. Parsley or Parsley. a little dollop of um, sea vegetable would be fun. Okay. And so mm -hmm. this is what it turns out to be. It's a wonderful soup. So... After you have pureed it, you just continue to let it simmer, and it makes yeah, it incredible. Yeah, I mean, not very long, but it's pretty much done, so it only needs another five minutes or so, Such and it's an done. Easy, easy soup. All right, so what, we, what we've done here is we've created these amazing foods today, which is really easy to show you. We've got the quinoa that we made earlier. We've got the cultured vegetables, which mm -hmm. is right there. We have a little bit of uh, oh. cooked kale, which is wonderful. And then there's also, we made the wakame salad and cucumber salad earlier. So we huh? have our beautiful salad. So these are the foods that we've made. Okay, a little bit of so simple. You can do this all in a matter of maybe an hour or so. You can make this beautiful, beautiful meal. Thank you very much. And then I love what you did is you took, this is something else that you did is you took the um, butternut squash soup uh -huh. and then you just ladled a little bit of this over the quinoa. So we have a lot of soups in our book that are very that are pureed and they're very creamy and they make a wonderful gravy. So I always say make enough soup that you can use it for other purposes too. That's Another great. thing I love to do we, uh, on my grain-like seeds, quinoa and millet, is actually use this medium chain triglyceride oil from Bulletproof. This is their brain sustain. It's 100% medium chain triglyceride from coconut and palm. It's very medicinal, very excellent for the thyroid and for the brain. 
This is 18 times stronger than coconut oil. Wow. It's delicious. It says that on, on the label. Top. <laughs> yeah, it, it really is. And you don't need much, just a little bit. Um, this is an oil that more people tolerate than many others. And you just pour just a little bit on top of your millet or quinoa or, you know, later on when you're eating rice and all. It's absolutely delicious. People, I put it on, you know, people didn't know what it was. And I put it on and they said, oh, my gosh, what did you do with this? It's so good. And this is just another way to get these type of oils into your diet. You could put olive oil in there if you wanted, and or a little pat of butter or ghee. What is this good for in your body? Well, well, it's um, medium chain triglyceride is the uh, feeds the bacteria in your gut and helps them grow. They love this type of oil. It also goes into the brain immediately and makes you think better. Mm. And it's fantastic for the thyroid. So those are the, the gut, the brain, and the thyroid benefit from this oil. This is brilliant. This is how to use food as medicine. Mm -hmm. You it can really cook is. this incredible meal very simply, very easily for yourself, for a group of people, for your family, and really help people improve their digestion while making a very simple, very tasty meal.